let's talk here while we're looking at these great fish um, about the future of the pupfish. Are they still endangered? Are they are they uh, thriving or what? We need a viewer, newer viewpoint. Turn this to Steve. Okay, I'm going to focus on Steve, but if you move over, I can get both of you. Okay. They're still very endangered. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and so what we're trying to do now... <laughs> I didn't know you were just a talking head. <laughs> uh, the, it's been a shell game for almost 40 years of moving the transplanting fish from site to site. And they have tremendous biotic potential. You put them in a place without predators and they will expand their numbers. In a year's time they can get off two and maybe three generations. Be thousands where you put in maybe two or three dozen. So we've, we've played this shell game and um, refined some of the techniques, like with here. BLM Spring was pretty much at the point of being unmanageable. Now it's, it, it takes some attention. We have a volunteer patrol that comes through every Saturday, and they clean debris from the fish barrier, and they walk the channel looking for bass, and they pick up litter and other things. Um, we don't have that level of maintenance and attention on the other five sites that we have the pupfish in. And so there's some doubt in our minds about what what is exactly the half-life of a pupfish population. Mm -hmm. So we need more sites and we need um, um, to resolve another issue and that is when you, when you transplant from one site to the next to the next in series, each time you're subsampling the original genetic diversity of the population. So right now we've got a study going, we funded UC Davis, some, some folks have done good work with us on other fish species to look at the genetics of the pupfish. Mm -hmm. And what we're finding is that the, the genetic diversity is subdivided among these refuges and that's just an artifact of our bucket management. So what we have to do to undo that is actually artificially create some reciprocal migration between the populations. So, so you that, have more diversity within each right. population. Right, so, so that each gene variant is present in as many or all the populations as possible. That way when we lose one population, which we know we're going to lose them all eventually, but when, each time we lose one we don't lose irreplaceable genetic mm -hmm. material. And then ultimately we've got uh, potential projects on City of Los Angeles lands as part of the Lower Owens River project and actually the, the legal settlement between Inyo County and LA over groundwater pumping where they're, they're going to mitigate for um, impacts to valley floor springs because there used to be other springs like this further south in the valley. Most of those are gone now due to yeah. groundwater pumping. So they're going to mitigate by creating artesian wells some other engineering solutions and hopefully that'll open up another half dozen or so sites that pupfish can be managed for and then ultimately um, uh, we can meet the recovery goals that, that will allow them to first be downlisted to threatened and then to be delisted. If but they get delisted though will you get the money to do all of this? Well that's a that's a complicated question. <laughs> they wouldn't be delisted unless there are institutional guarantees and programs mm -hmm. that would you know, imply some stability into the future. It's with, just quite astounding how much of man's interference is required to, to save these species. But it's to offset man's interference. Right. Uh, yeah. We've kind of let the... Um, the genie out by bringing bass into the valley. Mm -hmm. They're they're here permanently. There's, I mean, even no if way. we wanted to get rid of them and and somehow could technologically find a way to get rid of them, they'd be back the next weekend yeah. due to citizen action. <laughs> Human beings, yeah, we caused the problems, and as a result, we have to solve them. What happened when you posted this as a no swimming site? Yeah, yeah. So this is a popular swimming hole. And uh, on summer afternoons, you come out here, and there'll be umbrellas and lawn chairs and beer coolers, and it's 
pretty traditional. It's been going on for decades. And, and so at one point, the managers saw the bank erosion here and the disturbance to swimmers and waders um, kicking up aquatic vegetation and thought that's bad for the pupfish. So they put up a you no know, swimming sign. And within a week, there were 27 adult bass in here, all of them with little hook marks in their lips. Um, and where it was sort of a message to us bureaucrats oh, that... Uh, where would they have come from, do you suppose? Downstream or some other place in the valley? Yeah, there's 10 miles of channels in Fish okay. that that have bass. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so that would be the, the easiest place to get them. Okay. Yeah. Or Fish Slough Lake's full of bass. Sure. Yeah. So you, you were saying it was a message to bureaucrats? To you bureaucrats? Well, yeah, to, to us collectively. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that there is an expectation of multiple use and there's, uh, um, you know, if we ruin it for them, they can ruin it for us kind of idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, so people still come and swim here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And after a while, I think somebody took the sign down and it was never put back up. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, I, I don't see the swimmers as being a problem. I swam here myself, so. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. I don't support the prohibition <laughs> against swimming yeah. here, and I don't think it does much harm for pupfish, <clears throat> especially in um, no, I would in, say would. in consideration that now we have a detente, and we have mm -hmm. pupfish, and we have swimmers, and and actually though occasionally a uh, bass or two will show up here, and when that happens, when that Saturday the fish sloop patrol. Um, They'll call me up at home and I'll come out here with a spear gun and I'll jump in at the bottom end and swim up and find the bass and take it out. Yeah. And, uh, These are docents pretty much, people, local citizens that are environmentally aware. 